Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of Women of Arabia. Women of Arabia is a platform where we showcase women from all walks of life who with their sheer determination and passion, they have created a life of their dreams and carved a niche for themselves. And today, in conversation with us, is I think you are my youngest interviewee <laughs> to date. So I think it's almost a crime to call you a woman. <laughs> You're such a young girl. My youngest interview to date, Simarna Singh. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you. Thank you for being part of Women of Arabia. Simarna has lots of lots of accolades to her name. So she is um, the United Nations Global Compact Youth Ambassador, Ambassador yes. for the UAE. Yes. Right. And she's also Mazdar's future sustainability leader. Correct. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So many, so many accolades at such a small, young age. And she's also an entrepreneur. She's got a company of her own, along with the fact that she's still studying. Wow. How do you fit in everything? Amazing. I think, uh, <laughs> honestly, it's just happened. And I think it was meant to happen. And, mm-hmm. and there's so much more to achieve. And I'm grateful for all the leaders who have inspired me. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's go back. Sure. So you grew up in Singapore and Malaysia, yes, right? Yes, correct. Okay. And how has growing up been? Have you always been? What, what actually brought out the whole you know, spirit of uh, sustainability or the fact that you've been fighting for it with passion? Absolutely. Um, I think being brought up in, in Malaysia and Singapore, obviously, we've got a lot of initiatives that focus on sustainability. So both yeah. on the CSR side, um, as well as, you know, the initiatives with recycling, energy efficiency. Um, they're very passionate about it. Is it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So both Singapore and Malaysia? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh-huh. It's a very good environment to be in if you want to learn more about sustainability. I believe that's where my core passion came from, mm-hmm. um, as well as volunteering. I used to go to the old age homes. We had a charity week in high school um, so I used to do that a lot as well and I'm okay. really grateful so when it. you say high school you were in Malaysia correct right so where, why do you think sustainability and when you just said uh, all this is very important in that particular region or is it Asia that it is more focused I on? think um, we've been brought up like at least in Singapore and Malaysia they have this sense of we have to keep keep our environment clean we have to protect our environment for future generations. Um, and that's where their motto is. And then they kept focusing on it. Um, and um, is it a newer generation thing? or is I it think, something to be you- honest, it, it, it goes back. Because the whole act of giving, I think it's just the way it is. Their okay. culture is such. I, I truly believe in it. Right. And yeah. over the years, has it been um, the government and the focus Absolutely. on it has been more? Absolutely. I think more, especially recently in Singapore, for example, um, with the newer generation coming in and the fact that you want to become vegan, plastic free, um, the environment and the government is really working together to protect this. So I believe the youth are driving this change. Okay. So while you were growing up, um, there must have been something that just um, some incident or something that just switched in or were were you always that way ever since you were small? So I think the... Earliest initiative that I can remember is probably year seven and year eight. So in uh, year seven, I she remember... She talks like year seven and year eight. Like <laughs> years and then, what, three years back? Okay. No. <laughs> All right. Um, so in year seven, we had a charity week and I went to the old age home and I obviously ended up, uh, you know, volunteering for them and, you know, just the care, the love, the passion to give back to the society. That for me was a turning point. In year eight, we had um, a ring pull challenge. So you open a can and, you know, those ring pulls that you collect actually can create an artificial limb. Yes. Wow. So we used to collect it and measure it. And there were about eight levels and we all put in ring pulls. So till today in the UAE, I will open the ring pull and put it on the side. Uh, but obviously don't have a place to put it in. Yeah. I mean, these are things which we don't really know about. Absolutely. Oh, that's amazing. Ring yeah. pools. Who would have thought, right? Exactly. It was fantastic. And So you would say that your school and the environment really absolutely. did... Uh... I think the education really changed it. The Breast Cancer Awareness Day even. Um, I mean, in, 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 in Dubai, I ended up uh, volunteering and, and creating the whole event for my school in year 12, uh, along with the team. Um, and really, we raised a lot, a lot of money, mm-hmm. about, I think, 32,000 32, dirhams. Um, so we're really proud. Okay. All right. So going back to while you were studying and did you did you have in your school, for example, you know, the nature club or uh, uh, what was a club called? Sustainability. 
sustainability no, so class. Actually, believe it or not, all our students drew were drawn to these initiatives. Um, our teachers used to push it a lot. Um, and, you know, we used to have these uh, little class registers in the mornings um, where they used to inform us about all these initiatives. Um, and of course, they had other clubs like, you know, Helping Hands and initiatives like that. Um, we had one for um, pets as well to go and volunteer for them. Was it just your school or in general? All I the think schools? all the schools had mm-hmm. some sort of CSR initiative in Malaysia and Singapore. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. And okay, so from there, when did you move to the UAE? How many years so back was I that? So I moved to Dubai six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously came to further study um, and continued my education over here. Okay. I did my remaining high school over here. I did the IB diploma and my university. Okay. And when you say university, what are you doing? So I'm studying, uh, I'm doing a BBA honors degree in international hospitality. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. And <laughs> where, when did you set up your company? So I started this about one and a half years ago. Um, and we basically do it at universities at the moment. We're trying to educate the youth, private sector and governments. I've held 38 events so far. Um, and, you know, we collaborate, we get speakers. Um, and we try to educate everybody. We contribute on the sustainable development goals. Mm-hmm. Um, we speak about it and, and try to make a better future for us all. Okay, so when you came here and you studied, you were studying here, you Absolutely. said, and how different was education mm-hmm. here in terms of what do you think? Because I'm sure there are lots, because UAE is a growing country. It is Absolutely. trying to adapt as much as possible from the international market as much as it can. Uh, having said that, there are a lot of campaigns that they are Absolutely. running. Uh, but where do you think that there is a gap, right? For sure. I, and especially at the educational sector, so I believe. I personally feel the gap is now being bridged at the moment. So when I had first joined, I was a bit shocked uh, initially. It was obviously a culture change for me. Um, and that's the one thing about the UAE that I'm always grateful for. The millions of multinational Uh, people that are over here that I can connect with and learn about because that culture has really driven a lot of innovation in the country, I do believe. Um, But when I had come in terms of sustainability, I think there was limited that was being done. But if I speak about it today, because I think that's a more relevant example, um, there's a school that's opened in sustainable city called Fair Green. um, And they're talking about these goals and integrating it into their syllabus. Um, They're teaching students how to plant their own organic crops, how to look after it, how to grow. Um, And the environment itself is so green and lush. Um, Which is is surprising, right? Have you ever thought when you were coming here, did you think that a country like a desert basically (laughs) would be so lush and green? No, the change is fantastic. The leadership is brilliant. Right, the leadership is brilliant. And that, um, I guess, kind of shows us about how serious UAE is, the leadership is, like you said into more practices to be put in play uh to to be put in place so tell us about your company what's the name of the company what do you do how many employees sure it's just you so it's sustainable relationship partners at the moment i'm working with two people so me and the chief visionary officer we're working together to create this whole platform um the best part about the company is even though there's just two people behind it We've got a group of 50 people in front of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's always 50 people, different 50 people at each event. Okay. Um, so they all network together, exchange like-minded ideas. But beyond all of that, they do it with a purpose, which is sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, people didn't know about these goals, I feel, about one and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. And now when they speak about the goals, I feel like I'm, I'm grateful to be advocating them in front mm-hmm. of them. Okay. And uh, what what... What made you set up something of this sort? So, and at what age? What you were nineteen at that time? Like, you know, yes, 20, maybe, 19, yeah. 20, yeah. So what made you set up a company of your your own? Did you see there was a gap in the market? Absolutely. I think oh. there was a gap because people were not being educated on sustainability, on these mm. goals in specific. If somebody thinks about sustainability, they think about energy, water, and they think about solar, and that's it. Beyond that, they don't exceed that. And if you see the goals, they're so vast. We speak about quality education, gender equality. We speak about affordable energy, partnerships. Um, And that's really what excites me. Um, Also, when people are networking with one another, they often just focus on economic profit. But what about the social side? What about the environmental side? And why aren't you speaking about it? So that's what drew me to create this. Okay. And how has the response been after you have set it up? Fantastic. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, now the SDGs are becoming more common. 
Um, what is SDG? So the Sustainable Development Goals. Okay. There are 17. SDG. Yes, okay. DGs. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the United Nations created it in 2015. Mm-hmm. It's a framework um, that they use to accelerate sustainable development. Okay. Um, so and you've I, got your own sustainable... Yes, re- these are the 17 goals. These are the goals set by, by... the UN. The UN. Yes. Okay, so tell us through these. Okay, just walk us through these goals. Okay, perfect. Um, so the first one, the first two goals, well, they're done in order of priority. So the first one is no poverty. Yeah. Um, and we believe that that should be the first thing that they should achieve by 2030. 2030. Yes, okay. and I believe that's a bit ambitious, personally, yeah. um, because we're already in, what, 2019? 11 more years almost, to go. Almost exactly. 2020, yeah. Um, and if I if I move this back to the UAE, um, they have a vision of 2021, mm-hmm. and they're trying to focus on some of these goals as well with social development. Is it in relation with the UN? Well, so it's in relation with sustainability, but they're okay. looking at the framework and trying to integrate it. So Expo especially is doing quite a lot of work in this area. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay. So no poverty. The second goal is zero hunger because they believe that, you know, they want to make sure in that aspect, they don't want any, you know, malnutrition in the world. They want to feed the kids who are unable to provide for themselves. And we just don't want child labor as well. Mm-hmm. Um, another big issue in the UAE for focusing on was food wastage. Oh, yes. um, uh, especially in the hotel industry, uh, which is what my thesis is on. Um, and His Excellency Dr. Thani actually recently um, did a campaign with the hotels and they saved about 1.5 million food. So there's no food wastage in that sense and they're measuring it. Mm. Um, the third one is good health and well-being. So just to go back no to uh, the first, why do you think hunger is second on the list and not po- Why is it not first? Was, wouldn't that, how is it measured? Wouldn't so, hunger be, should be the number one goal? Well, I think... If you can't provide for yourself and you are in a poor country, how will you be able to accommodate for food? Hmm. So I think you have to tackle no poverty first because you need to find like jobs. You need to be able to provide for them, right? Before they can think fund for both. their basic needs, which is food, water, shelter, etc. Wow. I mean, that's how I would see it. Yeah. Um, but how are these measured? So, so here's the here's the flaw right. about uh, yes. these goals. Yes, there should be a flaw because <laughs> uh, as yeah. a layman, I Absolutely. would think that hunger should be the first one on yeah, the list, and not poverty, because poverty obviously. But then, as governments, you can go through a lot of initiatives where you can, I won't say eradicate hunger, but yeah. at least do something about. The millions who are who don't have very a one-time meal, right? So, so I'm just from a layman's yeah. point of view. One of, of my research uh, says that you know they believe education should be first. No. Yeah. So there's quite a few different opinions about it, um, but the flaw is it's just a framework, right? You say you're going to achieve these things, but they're not telling you how to okay. achieve them. So it's just indicators, and it's just beautiful pictures, and and I feel I feel that's the flaw in it. Um, because if I want to achieve, for example, reduced inequalities um, and make sure that there's no pay difference in men and women, how am I going to achieve it? Yeah. It's hard, right? It is. Yeah. Yes. So, so, right. Okay. So you were talking to uh, talking about food waste stage and how UAE is, um, uh, well, yeah, they are into, it's one of their top priorities, I Absolutely. would say, right? Absolutely. Right. And then the third goal is? Good health and well-being. Mm-hmm. Um, and so obviously everybody wants to have, with all these lifestyle issues, stress, uh, we all want to be in a, in a world where we're with good health, we want to have secure well-being, um, and we want to be you know, happy and prosperous as well at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I think you can't do anything without good health. No. To be very honest, health as well. Absolutely, at, at the end of the day, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we have quality education, okay. which is goal number four, which is something I advocate very strongly, um, because I believe that without education to sustainability or sustainable development, none of these goals are going to be achieved. Gender equality, mm-hmm. which is uh, goal five, and I know you're very passionate about yes, it as well. Gender equality, yes. is something I am. Yeah, yeah. and um, of course, your show is advocating this as right. well. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and I think I've met so many leaders who are really, especially in the UAE, really accelerating this. For example, like Sara Al Madani, yes. we have Her Excellency Sham Al Mazuri, the uh, Youth Minister. We have Amira uh, the La- from Lahum. Yeah, yeah, and you know these these people have really made a difference for me. And shown me that women can do anything that men can. Mm. It's just about hard work. So mm. it's great to see. There is clean water and sanitation, okay. which is goal number six. Mm-hmm. Affordable and clean energy. 
So these two, I feel, is spoken a lot about when you yeah. think about sustainability. And that's why I don't believe that, you know, it, it should, it is of importance, but I don't think if it's of that much importance. Like, of course, we need to save our planet, but we need to speak, we need people first to yes, focus on that. Yes, in order to save. Exactly. Okay. So then we have economic growth, uh, and that's obviously contributing to UAE's GDP, um, ensuring that, you know, more people are being employed. Um, we have innovation, infrastructure, and industry, which is goal nine, uh, blockchain, AI, yeah. machine learning, uh, big data, which is the next big thing that's happening. Yeah. Um, reduced inequalities, which is 10. We have... Reduced inequalities. Exactly. So, oh, it's not gender, but in no, general. But it, oh, okay, it, okay, it, understood. It's, it's about culture and also mm -hmm. about making sure that you don't have any pay differences between nationalities or gender. Mm -hmm. Um, and number 11, sustainable cities and communities, which I think is a very, very important one. We need to have um, that kind of society that's supporting this. Um, 12 is... And we have in UAE, I think in Dubai, we have a sustainability city, do we? Yes, we yes. do. We have a sustainable city. And in Abu Dhabi, we have Mustar. Mustar, okay. yes. Mustar was the first one, I believe. I yes, understand. correct. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. And then 12 is responsible consumption and production. So your recycling initiatives, your food wastage, how are you monitoring it? Uh, are you producing enough um, or are you producing too much? Which I think sometimes is a bit of the issue. Um, then we have 13, climate action. So the global warming, carbon footprint. Um, and 14, we have uh, life on water. So this is a very, very big one. And I think the media plays a really big role on this one. So the no plastic, yeah. no plastic yeah. straws. Um, and I think if anybody also today thinks about sustainability, this one has come up. Yes, so it has. many times. It has. Um, and that's really because the media has been pushing it. Mm -hmm. But what I think is why can't the media push the other goals a bit more? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, like maybe the there'll be a difference. The maybe one. there will be a difference. But I'm, I'm, I don't know whether the media is not pushing it enough, but I guess. I think people are choosing topics that are trending. Right. I think that's more like it. Yeah. Because I'm sure the media has. Um, um, they've I, spoken about the environment they've hmm. spoken about plastic because hmm. after the TED talk that was released um, yeah. they said you know we're going to push on plastic now um, but you know I feel like they've not done enough on quality education for example or women empowerment there aren't enough movies that are being developed um, I think one of the Emirati women here Naila Al Kaja yeah. she is doing a fantastic job in this region for promoting education and gender um, balance with the uh, Arabic humor as well. Right. Yes. Um, and yeah. She's doing a great, great yeah. job at pushing that. So we need more films like that. Mm. Yeah. All right. And then 16 would be peace, justice, and strong institutions. Mm -hmm. um, so your ethical aspects as well, mm -hmm. your policies. Um, this one, I think the government drives a lot um, and company policies that really accelerate this. Um, and the last one is required for all the other 16 to be achieved, okay. which is partnerships. Um, because if you don't have partners, then how are you going to achieve the rest? Right. Okay. So each country, so that, those are the 17 goals. And yes. it's United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. Correct. SDG, like you said. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so from these, each country is measured based on where... So what I'm asking is, like you mentioned, UAE, for instance, um, focuses on certain things yes. more than the other. Absolutely. And each country does, right? Absolutely. So... Is each country measured on uh, the goal that they choose or it's uh, how, how does that work? So basically, um, they have a committee, actually, they were explaining this in our uh, Mastar um, program, where they have a committee and they choose the goals that they believe that they're focusing on a lot. So, for example, seven, affordable and clean energy. Yeah. Um, His Excellency Dr. Thani is really pushing the renewable... Dr. Thani of Ministry of Climate Change. Climate Change, yes. correct. He's really pushing a lot about um, renewable energy in the UAE. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the solar panels especially. Um, so, you, you know, that's one of the goals they're focusing on, whilst other countries might focus on different goals. So depending on what they decide in the committee, they allocate those goals accordingly. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. And then they track mm -hmm. it by putting reports. So it's called Communication on Progress, COP. Um, and then they just update on the websites about mm -hmm. what they want to achieve, mm -hmm. how much they want to achieve, and their targets. So the UAE has the Vision 2022 yeah. Um, 2021 and then Expo as well so they've got a plan that they're constantly going on with right so my question probably would be because um, obviously the first two goals are very important yes we don't really see many 
countries, many governments actually initiated. UAE is doing a lot Absolutely. in terms of, especially the rulers here, Sheikh Mohammed uh, Al Maksoum. He's he is doing quite a lot in this front, but overall, globally, where, where do you think we're going wrong in not focusing on these two and focusing on something like you mentioned, plastic or renewable energy, yeah. which are very important. And even gender equality, to an extent, it has been talked about. But the first two key factors still remain uh, yeah. you know, at large. I really think a lot of people still don't know about this framework. I think it's only released in 2015. And surprisingly, four years later, um, I still go around and I mean, asking people, what, what, have you heard of this? And they're like, no, we haven't. Happened exactly, yeah. exactly. So if the UN has created this framework and believes that we should achieve these two, then why haven't they marketed enough that we need to do it by 2030 mm -hmm. um, and that you should know about these goals? So if they don't educate people about it, nothing's going to happen. And how do you think we should start by I, educating? I, I really think it starts from schools, believe it or not, because it's the younger generations that are really conscious about these changes. Um, and I really think that as soon as this framework is implemented in our syllabus, similar to what the UAE is doing with the Fair Green School, um, then, you know, the changes will be made because kids will eventually tell their parents that, oh, did you know about this? Get involved. Um, yeah. You know, and it's, it's a community initiative at the end of the day. Right. So that's how I see it. Yes. And after you started, let's say, your company, your organization, because it's not based out of UAE, but yeah. it's based out of the Philippines, right? Yeah. Yes. And... Um, after you started, how has the response, because you're fairly, you're young, right? For you to go into such a platform and talk to people, are you being taken seriously? Is it a bit of a, I guess I'm touching on the gender equality part. Yeah. Let's say, would it be different if it was a, a young guy, a young boy or a man who was going to go ahead and probably promote this? Do you feel that way? So initially, I don't think it's about gender, really, to be honest. Initially, I think, I had this uh, sense that no one was taking me seriously because of my age. Age, yes. Um, mm. And often they would cross question me to make sure that I knew my stuff. <laughs> right. And I'd be like, well, if somebody is passionate about it, then should that not be enough? Yeah. Um, if exactly. somebody is really making a change in the world and really trying to with, with like minded individuals like yourself. Mm. Um, so that was the initial issue that I had faced. Um, but a long time whilst I've been progressing, I believe that people have, have really started taking me seriously because. They say that I'm filled with passion, enthusiasm to which make a are. difference. Yeah, <laughs> which you are, which shows the U United Nations uh, Global uh, Compact, Compact yes. um, Ambassador for the UAE region. So yes. how did that come about? When did that come about? Yeah, so that happened about one and a half years ago as mm -hmm. well. Um, actually happened just by chance, believe it or not. And okay. I think it's uh, God's uh, will, um, truly. So I was applying uh, for this program online and I came to know about it. And the 10 principles that they have, they focus on anti-corruption, human rights, the environment and labor. Um, and I decided that I'm going to just apply and, and see where it goes. And I got it. I got accepted. Really, it just yeah. happened. So were you selected from applications in Absolutely. the region? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And how many had applied? Do you have any clue? No idea about that. No. They haven't told that. But they did mention that for Masdar, to be fair. Okay. Um, so when I had applied for that program, they said they only took 50 from the UAE. And I was one of the 50 that was selected. Right. And when you... For you to be... Because I'm sure there are lots of young girls and boys like you who would be interested... Um, in being part of the UN initiatives and how do you think they go about what are the steps as someone who's just passed out now and yeah. have gone through that how do you think these children should go about so I, I think firstly if you had to say how you would get involved in these initiatives I think social media is already really vast people are already speaking about no plastic no straws restaurants are doing it in the UAE where you get a straw and it says I'm not plastic yeah. hashtag right um, and I think as soon as you start digging more into this kind of research and you learn more and you, you follow these tags and trends, eventually you will be led to the goals. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about following, if you've got a passion the, for it. Exactly. Go, if you've okay. got the right, I think to be honest, things happen for a reason. And if you, if you end up following the right people, it will happen. Um, but how else they can get involved? I think schools play a big role. I think the government's already playing a really big role. Expo's big pillar is sustainability. They've got opportunity and mobility, and all three interlink with sustainability very, very well. Um, and so I think students should now be you know, more involved with these initiatives. What other things do you think these youth can do? Because 
of late, you do see that the younger generation, especially, I don't know if it's the social media pull or they are a lot of uh, aimless. Yes. In, they, they really don't know what their purpose is or what they have to, how, how to go about. Yeah. How do so, they focus? I think, to be honest, there's two ways of looking at this. So firstly, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I first began uh, my journey. It really, it really just happened when it was supposed to. Um, and, and the only thing I can say was that I kept doing different things. Okay. Um, I kept doing internships in different places. I spoke to a lot of people. I think networking, for me, really opened doors. Um, your network is your net worth. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, um, I think other things that drew me to sustainability was brands taking mm -hmm. more initiatives. Uh, H&M releasing their own sustainable fashion now. Yes. You know, how cool is that? We never thought that H&M would do something like this a while ago. Nike and Adidas have been doing it for a while as well. Um, now there's uh, in Levy's, I just saw a couple of days ago, where if you give them a pair of jeans, um, they will give you, I think, a certain percentage off whatever you purchase. But it's interesting that you say that. And with great initiatives, it's interesting you say that, but... Uh, I think my problem with that is you know about it because you are probably following the same path. Someone like me, who I would say shops fairly, yeah, I I don't I don't know about these. They're things. actually putting these um, little small little tent cards now on all their displays. Yes, but how much of marketing are they doing? You know, I think it's lacking marketing. I think there's so the reason people don't necessarily market now is because it's called greenwashing. So basically, people use sustainability as a tool to enhance their brand portfolio, right? right? Okay. Um, and it's been going on for a while. But how authentic is your brand then? That's the question that us as consumers really play. Um, and now it's a trending word. You know, everybody's using it, but it's used very loosely. So the more authentic brands, I think, purposely don't use it for certain reasons because they don't want to be deemed as a greenwashing company. Um, but really, if you open your eyes, there's quite a lot that they're doing now. And they're doing a lot just for Expo as well. I, I think that's really drawing a lot of people to that initiatives. Okay, fine. All right. So you're seeing a lot of... Um, so that's one way in which kids and youngsters can get involved because they do yeah. check the brands and follow yeah. brands. And there's also um, in the Youth Hub, which you know has been initiated by Sheikh Mohammed, um, and created this fantastic platform for youth. You can actually register online as a young kid. Um, and use that facility and attend their talks for free. And they do quite a lot of talks on sustainability. They do a lot of talks on languages um, and, you know, the different important skills that is necessary for youth today. Um, so I think that really draws it. Okay. And we did a youth debate recently as well with uh, Shamal Mazuri, um, Her Excellency. And um, we did it at Maslar. And uh, we were speaking about this, you know, is college education or uh, self-directed learning more important? in today's generation. What do you think is more important? So I was advocating self-directed learning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but college education won. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, wow. okay. And to be honest, there's more facts though as well in college education. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it is a business. Mm. So if anyone's advocating self-directed learning, I mean, there are very few examples that you can use in the world because everyone still goes through an education system of some sort yeah. to become the person they are. Mm. Um, but I think really with self-directed learning, it's all about taking your time, research and reading a lot of different things. Yeah. But then also, I don't think it, unless you are very, very focused, I don't think that path would be, uh, would help so you, I think, right? I think today, all the youth are really focused, believe mm, it or not. It? I really okay. think so. I've got two kids, I, mean, yeah. I beg to differ. I think, I I think differ. it just happens at the right age. Like, it's just all about passion. Like, I mean, you know, for example, your kids may love like TV shows at the moment or sports, for example. Dance. Yeah, dance. Okay, so each of these elements actually have essential key elements of the sustainable development goals. So, for example, sports. I, I was a basketball captain in high school. And I think that team, that leadership brought my partnership elements. Uh, it, it advocated my leadership skills. It taught me how to work with people of different cultures. So even with dance, um, there's a lot of work that's being done in Middlesex University with dance, poetry, and trying to advocate the goals. So it, it is being done. It's just, it takes a little bit of time. And of course, schools need to push it more so kids are more involved with these initiatives. That's okay. how it is. And in your organization that you've started, 
you have, I think you, you told me that you're trying to focus a bit more on the hospi hospitality industry. So, But why would you take that over, let's say, just youth in general okay. and to push this? Because that's, that, I believe, is something which is a big gap and yeah. you could do really great wonders in yes. that particular. So I have actually been doing a lot for the youth in terms of educating them. So I always hold these sessions purposely in universities so they can attend because otherwise it gets difficult for them to attend. And then they sit and they actually listen and they get a chance to network with businesses, which is great for them because they need that. Um, but why I want to focus on hospitality um, as an individual, and I'm doing a thesis on it, is because I think that's an area that has got limited research when it comes to sustainability. They're doing a lot in water, energy, and recycling initiatives, mm -hmm. but they're not doing enough on the goals because they've never heard about the goals. Okay. So I'm trying to advocate that and push that and create like this consulting framework for them so they can, you know, be deemed as a green hotel. So one of the uh, general managers said um, that if you want to be in the hotel industry today, a lot of the consumers are now looking for green hotels. They're all Googling what initiatives are you doing? You know, where is the no plastic? They don't want to see any of these initiatives in the room. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's where I think I think it'd be really interesting, and I'm studying it as well. So I'm really, right. really passionate about the hospitality industry. And how how much is the hospital uh, hospitality industry here, the hotels here? Um, where do they stand now in terms of a global uh, sustainability level uh, for all the initiatives that you mentioned? Where yeah. where are they? Are they right down at the bottom, or are they just climbing up, or are they up there? I think it's. Uh, perspective okay let's just say that. what's your perspective my perspective is they're not doing enough hmm. and and hopefully when i research when i uh, is it very different findings. from a hotel sorry to put you but is it very different from um, the hotel industry here as in let's say singapore for instance no no because they're all chains right so i've basically focused on four star and five star hotels yeah that's why i asked because exactly. they are chains at yeah the the consistency yeah. they got to make sure that what they're doing there they're doing here hmm. but it depends again like i mean some hotels might so here's the here's the very interesting part. Okay. So actually, the general manager plays a very, very important role in driving these initiatives. Hmm. If your general manager is not passionate about sustainability at all, it will just be very basic to the minimum. And is it important? It is so important. It is so important for the general manager to be involved in this. No. Is it important for hotels to drive a green initiative? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so, because... At the end of the day, now everybody's trying to focus on the millennial market. You know, we're traveling like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. We're, we're moving around and, and we do blog a lot. We all have our phones, we have our gadgets. Um, and we do, you know, instead of focusing just on the rooms and the F&B outlets, we're trying to focus more on these small little initiatives. Like I've been posting quite a bit on, you know, a hashtag no plastic or these goals are now being showcased in events. Um, they have something called green meetings in Singapore in the Marina Bay Sands. Mm. Um, you know, so there is a lot that's being done. It's just about the innovation and, and the leadership team. All right. So you're saying that the general manager is probably the key person to yeah. drive these initiatives. Yeah, I okay. think so. All right. And they mentioned that they need like government support as well to be able to drive these initiatives. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So these two key elements, if they work together, then yeah, great. You achieved your partnership goal. Okay. So, All right. Yeah, the most key one, exactly, which binds the whole thing exactly. together. Businesses and governments mm. need to work with each other. Um, and they actually had the Millennium Development Goals, which failed because they only focused on governments, which was for the UN. But businesses are the ones driving the change. We're the ones focusing on, on these aspects. Right. We are trying to tie economic environmental and societal policies altogether. Speaking of societal policies, how far, because quite a lot of communities here yeah. in the UAE, especially like you said, it's a multi melting pot of culture, right? Exactly. So different communities. How have the communities come forward or because you do a lot of networking and yeah. how do you, how do you think they are interested in, uh, because at the end of the day, UAE is not home to a lot of expats because most of them believe that they want to go back. Mm. But having living, having lived here, do they think that they need to contribute or is it changing in terms of community and the sustainability goals so here? I really think anyone who lives in the UAE 
does believe it's their home at the end of the day because yes. you know home is where your family is home, you know yeah. so they are really making changes like i'm just going to speak about the sustainable city because they're really driving a lot of initiatives um, and they have the community and during winters they have an origin market so okay. it's a sustainable market that mm-hmm. they have they get different sustainable vendors and they open it to the community to come see all these things and crafts that they're creating and purchase if they'd like or at least inquire about them so they're educated on it. Okay. They hold events, uh, of course there's the school um, and you know these small little things are really mm. making changes in the environment I think. Okay. And have the communities been supportive in general uh, when I you think, go around I believe network? the communities are being more supportive. Um, they have like a restaurant with vegan food for example and you know vegan is really making such big trends on Instagram as well. Um, and also, is it just for the trend purpose? No, I don't no. think it's just for the trend. Are you really? I think it's about, no, okay. no, I'm not. Um, mm. But I think it's about the health, really, mm. at the end of the day. People say that after they become vegan, they feel better about themselves. You know, their self-esteem and they're eating more of the nutritious food, which um, contradicts things like McDonald's. But then again, why is it so expensive to buy a vegan meal? You know, so that's where... That's where businesses are really, really missing out the point. Because sometimes they're only doing it for economic incentives and reasons, but they're not doing it for society's benefit. Like I might want to buy a vegan meal, but McDonald's is quicker and cheaper. Not just vegan, if it's just even healthier Healthy food. options. Absolutely. Yes, healthy. Absolutely. But it's more expensive here as, uh, or maybe in Singapore, because Singapore is in general a very, very expensive country, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think, I think uh, in the European part of the world, Um, they're doing okay, I think, with their pricing strategies. And in the European part of the world, or the, let's say, the first world countries, yeah. um, how far ahead are they in terms of uh, sustainability? So, for example, and... of course, there's there's been recent things. So, like, for example, in the US, they've completely banned plastic now. There's just been, like, a couple of days ago that they said that they're It's not... It's interesting we say US. Do we know that in uh, many countries in Africa <laughs> has banned it too? Completely Kenyan airport... I think it's the second year in a row. Of, yeah. Um, they don't have plastics. So yeah. there are lots of... Uh, Things so that are not being told. Yeah. Yes. That are not being you know mentioned in the media for certain reasons. And, and it's the same with whatever is going on in the political side as well. Mm. Like we spoke a bit more on Notre Dame in comparison to Sudan, for example. Oh, right? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, it just depends what they want to showcase. Just depends the what they feel it is the important. I think the media plays a really big role in achieving sustainability. Okay. And everything of late. Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Sad. It's a sad state of the it affairs is. if it that's is. the that's how it is. Okay. So um, going back to while you were growing up and, you know, did you always think that this is where you would probably mm-hmm. end up? And I know it's not, ending up is not something I should talk about because yes. you're too young <laughs> even. But do you, did you ever think, was that your dream growing up? So I know you I, had another dream. Yes, I did. I had another dream. <laughs> <laughs> What was the dream? Let's say it. Well, I wanted to be a Bollywood actress. Why? <laughs> uh, because I, I, I love acting. I love being on the camera. I really, really enjoy, um, I really enjoyed it, you know. I, I did theater in high school. I pursued drama as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I was a natural at it, to be okay. very, very honest. Um, and I felt comfortable. You know, it was not like I was putting on a show or something. I was just being myself. Mm. Um, so I really, really wanted to push for that. You that still dream. wanted. You can still do it, right? Yeah. Or has the goals and dreams changed? So the goals and dreams has changed a little bit. I think it has deviated. <laughs> But I okay. do believe that I'd love to... you know, still advocate these things, mm-hmm. not just necessarily on camera, but, you know, at events, at conferences, in front of youth. And I think that for me is the biggest stage of all. Okay. And mm-hmm. uh, what other initiatives are you doing in terms of, you're studying right now, you're still, you, you work, you've got a company of your own, and at the same time, you are a university student. student. Yes. So in your, uh, probably in your generation, kids or your peers, Um, what other initiatives are you doing for them? How are you changing? Um, because it always starts with the youngsters, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually created a really interesting uh, concept at the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management, where I'm studying. We're aligned with Jumeirah Group. Um, and what we did was created a concept, a food... So there was a food festival, and we created a sustainable food concept, uh, which is kind of unheard of. So we created everything vegetarian, all healthy, on coconut oil. Um, and we presented it to people and the traction that I got on LinkedIn, for example, was great. 
because people were like, wow, you know, I didn't even think there could be such a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one initiative. How'd you come up with all those initiatives? I don't even know. <laughs> really? <laughs> Truly. I think it's just, sometimes you just get the light bulb moment, right. you know? Okay. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then the, the whole concept, like the foods festival, is driven by the university. So mm-hmm. I just did a, a small little part part of mine all right okay. um, then of course with Mastar uh, because I got that through the academy and I so applied. now that you mentioned Mastar yes. you are the future sustainability leader yes. of Mastar you just got what seven months back yes, six months six back months was back. it yes. so future sustainability leader Mastar <laughs> how did that happen and yes how have you incorporated uh, what you've done so it's a, it's a very interesting story actually <laughs> they had sent out an email the Emirates Academy my university sent out the email if anybody would like to be part of the initiative go log in and I wasn't going to apply. So here was, <laughs> I was debating whether or not I should, you know, um, for the plain reason that I was I had deadlines at that exact moment, hmm. uh, not because I didn't want to or anything. I, I, I think it's the best decision that I've made till date. Okay. <laughs> um, honestly. And so I applied really last minute on, on, you know, a day before and submitted the application. Two weeks later, you know, they mentioned that you've been selected. And I was like, oh, wow, really <laughs> great. Uh, and the first event that we had was at Abu Dhabi Sustainability, Sustainability. Week in January. Yeah. Oh, it was life changing. Really, really, really. Just not being part of the debate, but also just meeting the people. I mean, I've had a chance really to experience Emirati local culture as well, because majority of the people who are in this program are Emiratis. And I never had a chance in high school even. Right. to be able to learn about their culture mm. and truly I feel like I fit in so it's well. It's interesting you say most of the people are Emiratis yes. because that's not again that's not something you hear about a yes, lot. Yes exactly. Um, the fact that they are really uh, they're so involved. involved. There's so okay. many women who are so wow. driven to make a change in the world mm-hmm. just speaking to them and, and learning about their passion like one of them wants to do fashion designing for example and she wants to look at sustainable fashion designing one of them's a food blogger and you know it's, it's so interesting that they're all looking at different areas but committing to one goal mm-hmm. which is sustainability one, one common goal so exactly. t- tell us through what happened at the sustainability the week weekend. yeah so we had different events that they had so they showcased it on foods water energy recycling initiatives um, and you got a chance to go around and listen to the different speakers. They also had a youth hub just dedicated to it. Um, and we had some inspirational youth leaders who were sharing their vision, their passion, and, and some recommendations of what youth should do. Um, that for me was very interesting. But ne- the networking opportunities that we had through Mastar, you know, mm. was great. Um, and post even Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, we've had workshops every month. Uh, with Mastar and and they focus mainly on like energy they said you know we should focus on food but the most recent one for me was life-changing um the entrepreneurship and innovation course that we had just a, like a week ago okay um and they taught us you know like how to pitch in front of investors you know what is the necessary like uh, attributes that you should have to become a leader you know and they gave us little little sessions um, and how you should make it like relevant to sustainability, especially yes. Mastar. Right. Fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. I'm so grateful to be part of their their program, really. Yes. And um, um, we actually graduate in like six more months. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully, you know, they'll be giving us uh, an opportunity to go to the UN. Uh, so this is Mastar's initiative, giving opportunity to the youth to go to New York to learn more about their initiatives, about sustainability, about these goals. And, you know, inshallah. Oh, that's nice. So it's a yeah. one-year program? It's a one-year it? program. Okay. Yes. And you have um, seminars every week? Or how does it so work? So it's a once in a month. Uh, mm-hmm. We have workshops once in a month for two days each. Okay. Yeah. So now and we're having the case study. Uh, we're about 50. 15? Five, five zero. zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what are the age groups of the... So everyone's about... Uh, so the age group is like 21 till about 26. Okay. Like so really young youth. Yeah. Youth. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, that's nice that initiative what have you what kind of advice do you have for the youngsters when you see youth um let's probably the teenagers yeah. um who would want to apply for uh, let's say the united nations program that you had applied for but then um that the sound the in the the, <laughs> the inner voice which tells yeah. them oh you're not going to apply oh, to like 50 or 500 5000 people who's there who's going to be applying with you uh, but like you said, you never thought that you would get into, right? You just applied yeah, just and you applied. would just... Um, so how do they power through youngsters? I think you need to take a risk and believe in yourself. Mm. 
I think if you if you don't apply, you're missing an opportunity. If you apply, you still have a chance on 50-50 and you got to take a bet on yourself, really. And even if you don't apply and you, you don't get selected, for example, but you apply, so what? You learn the, ex- you get gain experience from one application. You know where to improve and then you proceed. So I think that's the best advice I can give them. Keep going, right? Just keep going and then, and make a difference. Right. And um, through your course of life, have you ever had um, any, any times, I'm, I'm sure it must have been there, where you felt probably the inner voices or people telling you that uh, to focus on something else or that you're not cut out for this or any of those things. Have you ever had yes. those? Yes. yes. Actually, before I started my sustainability journey. Um, So I had joined a hotel because I did did my degree. And at the end of the day, the university wants you to do an internship for six months in a a hotel in a five star. And I I did. I went to Singapore and then I did an internship, which I lasted only about two weeks, I think. And I knew the minute like I went in that this is not for me. Well, what happened? Because I just, they just wanted, you know how it is when you're an intern, they make you do all the work. Uh, and they don't educate you they don't train you which is the biggest issue with big companies multinational companies today they just treat you like cheap labor and I don't you know it's just how it is and I didn't like it I didn't I didn't like that I wasn't doing enough in my societal workplace Mm. so I I had left I came back to Dubai and I didn't know what to do after that Uh, the amount of people who told me you know oh um, why are you back you know you should have just stuck with it you know it's just a few more months you know what's the issue and I think that really for me was like so disheartening. Yeah, and must, must it was, have made you question yourself. Yes, it was quite, really, really yeah. upsetting. But I knew that I had made the right decision because mm-hmm. it wasn't for me and I was not happy. And sometimes you just need to take a risk. Like even my parents were like, you know, why would you come back? Um, you know, just go with it. Um, and I'm grateful that I fought for what I wanted. Sometimes mm-hmm. your inner voice really tells you what you should do. Yeah. And I think you should focus on the positive part of your inner voice than just the negative true right that is a good uh, <laughs> advice i guess but sometimes it's really difficult, it is difficult. you have to especially as a youngster as a Absolutely. teenager you've got so many people telling is it the inner voices or is it the outer voice that's more difficult to control or i think it really depends on your personality mm-hmm. like you have to be strong to know that people are always going to be talking about you whether you like it or not yeah. it's just the world we live in Mm-hmm. But you got to be strong enough to mold yourself that I'm not going to be listening to everybody else. I will take their advice. I will consider it. Thank you very much. But at the end of the day, it's your choices that shape who you are. People can tell you whatever they want to do. It's because they don't, they don't know what to do with themselves, clearly. Or they might be giving you some relevant advice. That's fine. But, you know, no one can tell you what you should do. Yeah. So I think you need to stand up for yourself. And I think sometimes the youth don't know how to do that. But that's because we've got so many opportunities in front of us. We've got so many, like, you know, fields that were not there maybe in like other people's times, you know. I mean, sustainability, like, I don't think it was considered a profession at that time as well. Um, I mean, people used to speak about it, but now it's, it's, it's changing as well. So I really think that you should, you should give yourself time to just look at everything and do different jobs and then decide what you want to do. Right. But also... Uh, sustainability development and that particular career path is also so even now in this generation it is still so far and few between exactly but does it make you question yourself that um, if I go ahead to start to to take this for example this particular path that I have decided to go ahead with um, what what about the future what's it going to hold for me because there are lots of other well-set career paths that's out there absolutely right does it question does it make you question yourself no. do you see that amongst um w- would that be a choosing factor for many many youngsters so i think today the the biggest factor that we all have is security mm-hmm. i think even for me i think that's a big 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 part like if we don't have our own money and we don't have our own independence that makes us question why are we doing the job exactly right but mm-hmm. that's also another reason why we are in that job <laughs> because you believe in it. Yeah. Because, no, I, I think that if you are drawn to a job just for money, yeah, then you, you believe are in, in what, exactly, you, you, what are, you want, yeah. right? No, I think you're in the wrong job. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, for sure. Yeah, because I think that it should be all about passion. Because you will earn that money, but it just takes time. Mm-hmm. But again, it is, it is that 50-50 risk that you have to play. 
nothing is certain today with AI robots and I don't know what not. I mean, there's a hotel in Japan, which is fully run by robots. So yeah. So what next for you in terms of all that you're doing for your organization? Do you see your organization growing here? What, what are your goals? Not these. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So um, next, to be honest, I'm still going with the flow at the moment. I think it's very important to just absorb each day as it is. <laughs> right. um, no, but in, in the future aspirations, no, I'd like to be able to long term travel the world and mm -hmm. conferences, uh, be able to speak to individuals. That's my long term goal. Um, I'd like to pursue this hospitality consulting as well. So that's what I'm really focusing on at the moment. Okay, and from all these goals, which is the one which is oh, education, you said it. Yeah, no, I've got a few that I'm advocating. Okay. So it's quality education, gender equality, economic growth and partnerships. And partnerships. And from these, what do you think you're going to uh, focus the most on in future? So I think each goal will interlink Mm -hmm. somehow or another. Okay. So I think that I'll focus on all. <laughs> no, I really oh. do think I will be able to focus on all. You, you do. Yeah. And how do you think, um, let's for example say about um, quality education, some final words, yeah. um, how the education system now can change and how do you think that the youth can get more involved and more aware of such um, goals and how to move about, move about in their future? Okay, perfect. So in terms of how they can get more involved, um, like I mentioned earlier, like, you know, we can obviously have schools campaigning for it. So that's what they can do at the moment. Um, and but, how do you see your organization being part of it? Yeah. So already we've done 38 sessions yeah. catered for the youth um, and the private sector and government. So what I want to do in the long term is try to sustain this, uh, but try to get them to be able to take a more leadership role in helping organize these events as well. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marna. It was such a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank for you. Women of Arabia. And like I said, you are the youngest interview we've <laughs> had so far. Thank you. But so much. I can really see the passion that you have. Thank and like you mentioned, age is definitely not a number. Age is just a number. Age should not be a barrier to, if you have passion in whatever you do, it should not be a barrier to anything. Thank you so much. Here's wishing you all the very best thank you. for everything that you're doing. Thank God bless you. and thank you very thank much. Thank you so, so much. So that was another episode of Women of Arabia. Stay tuned for the next one with another amazing woman. Thank you.